everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am continuing to show you how to use Scrivener. If you haven't watched it already, I have my Getting Started in Scrivener video, which just quite literally shows you how to set up a Scrivener file and some of the basics. This video is called Scrivener Basics, but it's really like Basics 2, because getting started in Scrivener is Basics 1. So Basics 2, I'm just gonna be showing you a couple other things basic things that you can do in Scrivener in addition to, you know, having folders for your chapters and, you know, compiling and so on and so forth, the things that I covered in getting started in Scrivener. So I'm going to pop you over to the handy dandy on screen demonstration. I'll walk you through these things so you can see not just what they are, but how to use them should you choose to. But don't forget the lesson from the first video on Scrivener. It is totally okay to be super, super basic, even more basic than this, because I don't even use all of the tools that I'm going to show you in this video. These are just things you can use if you choose to. But if you don't want to fuss with it, all you have to watch is the Getting Started in Scrivener video. But onward for those of you who want to know some more Scrivener basics. Hey guys, welcome back. If you watched my Getting Started in Scrivener video, this might look familiar. This is indeed the uh, file where I imported an existing Word document into um, a Scrivener file, and I'm just going to use this to show you some more of these basics, as I mentioned in the intro. I'm going to go over just a couple of things. This isn't going to be particularly long, um, because I am calling this Basics 2. There are, of course, more complex and involved things you can do in Scrivener uh, that I don't really know much about. That would be an advanced Scrivener video, and I will have to learn how to do some more stuff in Scrivener to show you that. So, in the interest of Basics 2, I'm going to start with something really cool that I don't think everyone knows exists, and that is find and replace for Scrivener. There's of course normal find and replace, but what I want to show you is project replace. This of course you can do in Microsoft Word, but it's not the most obvious thing in Scrivener where it lives and how to use it. So let's say you want to change your main character's name or any character's name, and I have indeed done this. I have done a universal find and replace in Scrivener to change character names before. So we're just gonna go with, so my main character's name is Stella. So let's say we wanna change Stella's name, let's say to Jane, for Jane Eyre. Ignore case means it would change any instance of it, so do be careful if your character has any sort of name where uh, their name could also be part of a normal word, you might have an issue. I don't think that's gonna be an issue with Stella. Um, or even Jane, so I'm just gonna go with it. It's gonna find and replace it everywhere. So I'm gonna hit replace. And it says, this action cannot be undone. Do you wish to proceed? So I'm just going to hit, oh gosh, do I wanna hit? <laughs> yes. It's gonna change your name in this entire dummy file. Well, I can always create a new one. So I'm gonna say yes, Stella's gonna become Jane. Luckily, this isn't my real file that would be annoying so then close and look Stella has become Jane in the entire novel so this is really good when you have to make a big universal change to your manuscript it's most useful for changing names but you can also do a universal find replace on um, if there's a specific word that you've overused or you change the definition of something really useful tool Next, I'm going to show you how to use the split screen function. This is going to be most useful to you for revision, but you might find that it's helpful for drafting as well. This is a tool that I heard Beth Revis raving about uh, for ages before I tried revising in Scrivener, and she is absolutely spot on. It is fantastic. So to show this to you, I'm going to create a new scene file. So you see it here. It doesn't matter what you name it. It's blank. So you hit the split screen function. You're gonna find it right over here. As you can see, there's a vertical split and a horizontal split. I prefer the vertical split, so you're gonna hit that. Resize to your desired size. So currently, both windows are the same document. It's always gonna default that way, but this is the magic you can do. So we're actually gonna change this to the current first chapter and then this is the new document. So if you're revising, let's say you need to make some changes. So you can copy and paste the stuff you want to change, but let's say you're going to rewrite this. So then you would rewrite it. Things happened. 
or whatever it is. Obviously, that's not real. And then you would copy and paste. You know, you can just keep going. Or alternately, some people find it very useful to actually rewrite their novels from scratch when they revise. And so the split screen can be useful because you're looking on the left while you are typing on the right the new version. Really, really useful tool for revision. And I'm just going to briefly show you just what the other split looks like. So the horizontal split would look like this. I just personally, this doesn't work for me. I like to see it side by side like this. So that is the split screen function in Scrivener. So another cool thing you can do in Scrivener is you can do all sorts of labeling type things to any of your scene files to help you keep organized. You can use this during drafting, but I find it a particularly neat tool for revision again. So if you right click on any scene, you're going to see that you get a bunch of options. You can add new things, you can move this file to the trash, but here we get into the interesting stuff. So you can label it. As you can see, you have the color coded labels, idea, notes, character notes. You can edit to create your own custom labels. Lots of options there. And you this might look familiar if you did watch my Getting Started in Scrivener video. And I'm going to show you this again in a minute. When you click the inspector, you get all sorts of options here for your scene files as well and you'll see that the labels are also there. So I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Again, right click. You can give it a status to do first draft, revised draft, so on and so forth. But then what I tend to use is this thing. I love to change the icon. As you can see, the default is a little notepad symbol, but you have all of these options over here. Well, you can see some of the ones I have used recently. The warning sign, a blackboard, a test tube, a thought bubble, a magnifying glass. You can assign whatever meaning you want to these. I like to use the little warning sign because it's bright and yellow and hard to miss for like the scenes that I really have to focus on, the ones that involve the biggest rewrites or might cause the most ripples. A uh, thought bubble for like need to brainstorm an idea or a magnifying glass for you need to look at this a bit closer. But you have tons of options down here, the clapperboard and the eye, the information, a lectern, light bulb. You can do whatever you want with these and I find it really useful. So if you're revising, like, let's say you put a light bulb here, maybe because you need to, you know, you just had a brilliant idea for revising this or you need to come up with ideas for revising this. And then chapter two might be a speech bubble, like maybe you need to work on your dialogue in this chapter. It can really be whatever. The icons are meaningless until you assign them your own arbitrary meaning. But I like using the icons while I revise. And then when I'm I've done the thing that I need to do, I just reset the icon so that I know that I did it. So this is just a cute little thing that I like to use in Scrivener. So coming back to the inspector that, again, I did go over this briefly in my Getting Started in Scrivener video, and I, I gave it the ironic tag there, and it's still the case now. I don't actually use this, but it is something that I want to show you. So just like when you right click on any given scene, you can give it the label or you can give it the status. You can also do document notes here or general project notes. It's just a really useful space. You can do a synopsis for your scene that would appear on your scene cards when you go to the manuscript format with the corkboard. And I'm actually going to take us off split screen. So we'll go back to full screen here. Um, so just really all these useful different ways that you can do different windows and put information on the side just different ways to look at your draft. You can see that the color coding is going to show up here on the corkboard. So if you're a visual writer and the corkboard method sounds attractive to you, but you want a digital version, this is a very useful space where you can visualize your novel. You could put revision notes on these scene cards, whatever it is you need to do to stay organized and work. Now I do want to go over again something I did kind of, you know, jump the gun. I covered this in the Getting Started in Scrivener video just because I was kind of really excited to show you and it is kind of a basic one thing, but I think it's worth showing you again in basic two in the event you're watching this and you didn't watch the Getting Started in Scrivener video, which is totally okay. They are not required watching in, in order. You can watch either of these for whatever your needs are. So tracking your word counts and project targets, just going to go over this quick. So as you can see, you can input a manuscript target. So let's say my target for this novel was indeed 95,000 words. 
Look, I hit it because it's 95,000 words, but let's say my target was 120,000 words. You'd see it's like a, a lighter limey green. Um, so when you set your goal for your project, it's obviously always going to start with a blank bar. Then as you write, it's going to be red, then yellow, then it's going to turn green for when you hit that goal. You can do the same thing for session targets. So you can decide whatever your word target goal is for your individual writing sessions. So let's say your goal is 1000 words. So here you can see kind of the, you know, reset bar. Since I haven't actually typed anything in Scrivener, this isn't going to fill with anything unless I do. So let's put a little bit into this one right here. We're just gonna, all right, so I guess I have to put real words because those don't count. Hold on. So let's just copy and paste this into here. As you can see, that's 339 words and it started filling up the bar to orange. And this is a note for Scrivener. If you copy and paste text, it is going to count towards your word count goal. So if you're only interested in your actual words organically, freshly typed on the day in the session, you'll need to take note of your word count before you copy and paste anything in. Just note that I've definitely encountered that before where I did some like moving things around and copying and pasting and I lost track of my actual word count. So this will automatically reset every time you close and reopen Scrivener. But if you're like me, you leave Scrivener open all the time on your desktop to remind yourself to write. Hopefully it means you actually do. So you just hit the reset button anytime you want to restart your count. Something I'd also like to point out is the project statistics. I don't usually use this, but it is a way to get kind of an accounting of everything that's going on in your book. As you can see, it's gonna give you the word count, It'll give you the character count, which isn't really useful. And here it tells you the pages in a paperback and the pages printed. I find this to be really inaccurate. It might be accurate for the pages printed, but not particularly helpful for pages paperback. I'll tell you my book, this is my entire manuscript, is actually 400 pages in the ARC and in the hardcover that will be coming out. So that's clearly not accurate. You can also look at the statistics for us any given selection of text. This might be useful for looking at the statistics of a specific chapter or scene. Something else kind of cool, you can click on the text statistics. This is honestly also something I don't use that much, but I do find this nifty. You can look at the word frequency. It's not particularly useful for things like the, because we use the a lot, but as you scroll down, you can start to see the words that you're using a lot, and you might be able to find things that you're repeating. I mean, using gravity four times in one chapter isn't terrible when there's a gravity failure, but let's say you have some crutch words and words that you are using too much, you can find them by looking at this. Now, something I'd like to point out that a lot of writers ask about, and that is backing up your work and how can you do that in Scrivener? I'm going to be honest, I do this in a very roundabout, and I guess you might say complicated way, but honestly, I don't find it that complicated, and it is what works for me, and that is when I'm done with a session, I compile everything into a Word document, and then I upload that Word document to my Google Docs so that I can access it later at any time on my phone or you know from another computer, what have you. That's mostly just so that I have a full history of the progress of my novel, you know, day to day to day, and so that I never lose anything. But you can formally back up your Scrivener files so that you are a lot safer. You're gonna do that from here. You can sync to an external folder and this is how you're going to sync to Dropbox. You have the option to choose where you wanna sync things on your computer. So you can just choose either a Google Drive or a Dropbox folder and then automatically sync your Scrivener files there. You can also force a backup of your Scrivener file by going here. If you click backup now, it's gonna back it up wherever you have it on your hard drive. You can also choose backup too, which means you pick a new and different place to back this up. But again, I'll be honest, I am not the best person to show you all of the tips and tricks for meticulously backing up your novel specifically in Dropbox. Again, what I do, I compile, I save as a Word document, and I keep copies of those Word documents both on my desktop and on Google Drive so that I have double copies of everything. I am not overly worried about losing my Scrivener file, partly because I do know how to import a complete Word document into a new Scrivener 
project. And so I guess I'm just not overly worried. Watch someday, you know, something horrible will happen. And I will regret my very statement, but just letting you know, showing you that it's there, but not something that I use. Last but not least, I just kind of want to show you something a bit fun that you can do in Scrivener that might be a bit surprising. You're going to go to tools, to writing tools, and then to the name generator. It does what it says on the tin. It randomly generates names. As you can see, these are mostly going to be good for a fantasy novel. It's a random name generator. You can also do first name meetings to find names that mean specific things. And then you can store the names that you like here on a short list. Just if you are stuck on names, this is a nice tool that exists within Scrivener that you can use. So just something cool I thought I would show you. That's really it for basics too, kind of the, you know, extra level of things that you can do in Scrivener once you've gotten started. So I'm gonna bounce you back to my lovely face. And we're back. How was that? Was that interesting? Are you going to use a couple of the new things that you learned? I, of course, as I mentioned, love the split screen function. I do use that for revision. And I showed you a couple of other things that I know are favorites with other people, even though I don't personally use them. So I hope this was useful. You learned some new things about Scrivener. Hit me up with any questions down below in the comments, including any more requests for things that you want to see. If I am able to figure it out myself, I will show you in a video or answer your question down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It lets me know that I should do more like kind of on-screen demonstration type videos, not just for Scrivener, but for other things as well. So thank you so much for watching and happy writing everyone.